Mike Houston and the ECU Pirates are in store for a potential breakout year. And we've seen that for now uh, a couple years, but it doesn't seem like they've been able to do that. Now, they did make a bowl game last year, which is very exciting for that program. And with the talent they have returning, there's no reason to believe they can't repeat that task, repeat that achievement. It just comes down to a few things that we'll discuss today. The top 10 players for ECU have some serious talent. And if they're all on the field and can find consistency with others, they're going to be a very dangerous team, especially on offense. You look at the talent they have returning on offense. No reason to believe they can't be one of the best offenses in college football, at least one of the most explosive. So let's take a look at the players that are going to be the big contributors for ECU and how they make an impact to getting ECU back to a bowl game. Keaton Mitchell emerged as the explosive star for the offense at running back. The backup for Rajay Harris last year or two years ago, he really solidified himself as the explosive weapon that they've been missing. He averaged 6.5 yards per carry with nine touchdowns and rushed for 1,132 yards. Has a little bit of ability as a pass catcher as well. That's something that this offense really needed out of the backfield. They needed a guy who can be a home run threat, a guy who's going to be able to make guys miss. And his ability to do that put the offense on a new level and can do that again in 2022. Holton Ayler's whole career has been this one big roller coaster. You've had the the highs, highest of highs, which is the 535 yards and six touchdowns against an elite Cincinnati secondary. And you've also had the lowest of lows. He's had multiple games under 100 yards, including two of the other games he played against Cincinnati. This is a guy who's got the potential to be a really good player. He just hasn't been consistent. Last year, he completed almost 62% of his passes. But he did throw 10 interceptions. Now, he threw 18 touchdowns and over 3,100 yards. But again, it just speaks to the inconsistent play that we've seen from him. This is a guy, a lefty, that if you're you're watching him, people kind of compare him a little bit to Tebow with how he throws. But he's honestly a better thrower than Tebow was. And that has a lot to do with the talent around him, too. Uh, He has guys that are going to get open, but he has to make those plays, too. So you've seen the high. It's almost like he's a high ceiling, low floor kind of player. ECU needs him to still keep those high highs, but those lows need to go away, or at least the the floor needs to be raised a little bit. Well, Naylor's is very capable of doing that. He's very capable of being an elite player that can play consistently. It's just we haven't seen that as often as we would like, as often as his program would like. And if he's able to do that, this team becomes very scary, like I said earlier, as an offensive team with a ton of explosive potential. Safety Jerry Wilson was a linebacker at one point, which is terrifying. This guy knows how to play all around the field. they, They let him do a lot. He's a versatile player that can play still a little bit of linebacker, but even when he was playing linebacker, They let him run with slot receivers, and he kept up just fine. So they finally moved him to safety, and he proved that he can do a little bit of everything. 43 tackles, four tackles for loss, two and a half sacks, four passes defended, one interception last year. He's proving that he is a versatile weapon, a dynamic weapon, someone that's going to give them a lot of excitement on the back end of their defense. They lose a couple pieces in the secondary, so having a guy like Wilson back is going to be huge for this defense. Tight end Ryan Jones is also a former linebacker that comes in and transitions over to tight end. The transition was a little bit rough at first, but you could see the physicality in his game. He wasn't scared to make a block. He wasn't afraid to do something that required him being in the trenches. He was comfortable there. And then really from there, he kind of took off and solidified himself as a go-to pass catcher 442 yards almost 12 yards per catch five touchdowns he is one of the best tight ends in the entire country and now that he has a full year experience he's worked through those those tough times and became a solid player i think this year is going to be a big one for him running back rajay harris was the former starter until mitchell took over he's a solid backup when he looks at what he did as a freshman he had a solid season and last year Took a little bit of a step back as the backup. 164 carries, 579 yards, which only gets us 3.5 yards per carry. Four touchdowns. 
I still like him as a backup. I don't think that that's something you should scoff at. I think that he's a, a great backup to Keaton Mitchell and almost gives them a little bit different look than what you get with Keaton Mitchell. Mitchell is more of the speedster that's going to try to run past everybody. And then you're looking at Harris, who's going to be maybe more of the physical back. That's a good combination, and I think one that's going to bode ECU real well. Xavier Smith somehow is coming back for another year at ECU, and that's huge for this defense. This is a guy who has been a leader for the front seven for a while now. Now he's working at that defensive end, linebacker, edge, hybrid position. And last year kind of took, it's kind of like Ryan Jones, what he went through. He was going through a new position, learning kind of how to be on the edge and what that requires. And now he has that full year of experience and it's, he's a multi-year starter for ECU. And I have no reason to believe that he'll be just fine, if not better than last year. You look at what he's done over the last few years. This is a leader who's going to get the defense in shape get everybody in the front seven aligned and get them up to speed. That's a guy that while even though he might have not have the highest ceiling of everybody here, he's still a guy you need on your defense. Losing Jaquan McMillan was a huge blow to this ECU defense. You look at what he was capable of doing last year and the last couple years, a guy like him made a big impact and now he's gone. Malik Fleming gets a chance to step up and be the new go-to cornerback the new shutdown guy and now he has to get players across from him or opposite of him I should say up to speed but that's something he's more than capable of he's been a multi-year starter as well and while he hasn't been on McMillan's level he's had plenty of experience teams have tested him plenty to the point where he knows what he's doing Isaiah Winstead comes from Toledo. I think this was a huge get for the ECU Pirates, especially with receiver kind of being up in the air. He had 520 yards last year, averaged 13 yards per carry. I think that in this offense, he'll do better than what he did at Toledo. And with, like I said, with ECU needing some players at the position, he's a huge addition to this squad. Avery Jones is a veteran, uh, 20 games started, 874 snaps last year. He is a player you need on your offense, and it's a good thing he's coming back with Holton Aylers. I like that center-quarterback combination. I think that you have stability there at the two more important positions on the offense, and Avery Jones is a guy to definitely pay attention to up front. The final guy I'm going to put here is C.J. Johnson. Right now his status is up in the air, but if he comes back and he is able to play, this is an extremely explosive player who at one point was averaging nearly 20 yards per catch. Last year had 520 yards, 15, almost 15 yards per catch. And this year we're not really sure if he's going to hit the field or, and there hasn't been a ton of news on him. But if you're looking for an explosive playmaker on the outside, this is the guy. If he's not able to go, you look at a guy like Winstead and Ryan Jones to step up. But for now, if C.J. Johnson is good to go, this is the guy you're going to want to worry about if you're facing ECU. And it's a big reason why ECU can be explosive. If he's not, they'll be fine, like I said. But if he's on the field, he makes them that much better.